Hello, welcome, greetings. We are the Defenders of the Veil, aka DOTV Podcast. It is Monday night, and that means, well, it's the third Monday of the month, so that means it's time for Strixhaven University and our Guild of Chaos. I am DM Ron. I will be your dungeon master this evening. Joining me today, we've got Lewis. Why, hello, hello, hello. It is I, Lewis. I'll be playing Castian Morabar. Let's see. Monk. There you are. Of the awesomeness. And then tonight, we also have with us Cat. Playing with the goblin, Right, and that's actually going to be it for uh, live players this evening. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, that's all right because this is Strict Saving University. It's not necessarily like a like you guys are in the middle of a mission and. And, you know, with half the party suddenly dipping out, you know, not a big deal. I appreciate that so much, Lewis, because you could use that Prime Sub anywhere. And I use it here. And you use it here. I love it. Um, yeah. But... Uh, un unlike a normal uh, jumping into Strixhaven, uh, we we're actually picking up from last week's game. Yeah, you just say that's odd only because this is you know supposed to be a once a month thing. <laughs> Either way, oh, that's fine. You gave Gildo a sugar rush. Well done. Yes, I did. <laughs> all right. I suppose I could have rearranged these cards first, but that's all right too. I have to either. I'm going to be redoing the entire overlays at some point, so. We'll get that all figured out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Welcome back to Strixhaven, everyone. Um, Kat, would you like to fill us in on what happened last time, please? Um, okay, last time... Let's see. Well, first of all, we went to go hunt down Rosie, see where she was, and she was at... The uh, arrow jump field. Hope I pronounced that right. Yeah. And then we were talking to her, and I don't remember what she said. I've slept since then, so I don't remember every detail. <laughs> but um, we ended up deciding to go back to the manor. We we're gonna try and get the doll one more time. We we'll try one more time. Only we went around the back. And we got to attack the plants and. I think a statue on the inside. And then we were like, you know what? Fuck this shit. We left. <laughs> we're gonna make our own doll. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, I guess, butler of the area came around the corner and was like, uh, what are you guys doing there? And, like... Yeah, that guy. Yes, uh, he has a name, but I forgot it. I also forgot it. That's all right. That's all right. So, um, yeah, that's that's essentially where we left off. So I'm just gonna go through the the message of the day. But one thing we did forget is when we were at Era Jump Field, we had dressed Mitzi up as mm. uh, our lovely Rosie. And then had her walking around, uh, at just right out of her view, just to confuse her. 
No, you minor illusion had Dank and minor illusioned her. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because we real we were going to press Mitzia, but we then we realized we uh, just going to minor illusion because it's making it to where nobody else can <clears throat> or may not see it. You know, if if Mitzi's walking around. Mm -hmm. John Field, a lot of people would see that maybe hopefully a few people would see the illusion of the uh of Rosie but not know you know who's at fault yeah and then guys if you ever do get caught up on the recap I try to keep the the message of the day as as current as I can so this uh I'll just kind of buzz through it real quick so you know yeah you got caught sucks but it wasn't too bad they gave you a warning um, and yeah you had revenge you confronted Rosie you tried to you know mess with her um, and sassy Sally bitch. Yeah. yeah you tried once again to get sassy Sally Jane but um, yeah, after after a bit, you're just like, fuck this shit. You you decided the risk outweighs the reward, and you're like, you're going to make your own Sassy Sally Jane. So you went back out the back, you snuck back to your dorms, which is a very smart move, because they were waiting out front for you. And yeah, it, it it's now the following morning, so... Can um, we look up on the intrawebs of the magical webs, whatever, uh, and get some kind of more idea of what uh, Sassy Sally could possibly look like? Mm. Descriptions more, you know, detailed picture type things out there somewhere that we could find? Well, so, um, I, I've been thinking about this a lot, trying to figure out how exactly I wanted you guys to go about doing this. And that that is something that had crossed my mind, is what exactly does the doll look like? And, no, you guys don't really have you know that it's a pink haired doll in a a uh, oh, where did, a tartan dress a checkered tartan dress let me go back up to the description of her so I thought it said oh wait yeah she's a pink haired doll wearing a patchwork tartan dress Now, one one thing I had I had thought was like you 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 have this vague description of it, and it's essentially the same description that most any other student is going to have as well. So one thing that you might have going for you is the fact that people you know most of the students they've only heard of Sassy Sally Jane. Most of the students more than likely probably don't even know what exactly she looks like. They just have their basic description and what she does. You see, that's what I was originally thinking. And what she does, what does she do? Now that... Well, let's think about her name for a moment. Sa Sassy. Sassy Sally Jane, yep. Um, where did that little blurb go? Come on, this is so unorganized. Okay, yes, yeah, Sassy Sally Jane. So, even, even just mention, like, you would have heard of this doll at some point during school. Um, Sassy Sally Jane is the talk of the campus for decades. Sassy Sally Jane is a pink-haired doll in a patchwork tartan dress. 
and inside the doll is a voice box that some clever students had rigged to repeat rude phrases whenever the doll's hand is squeezed. Uh, jokesters used it to irritate faculty and staff members extensively before it was confiscated. The doll has sat in the attic of Captain Dapplewing's Manor ever since alongside other broken, malfunctioning, or forbidden items. And that is the legend of Sassy Sally Jane. That, uh, so, when the, when the other kids like are like, hey, if anyone's going to be able to do this, it's you guys. It's not exactly a rite of passage, it's more of like a feat of strength. So, like, if you can pull this off, your name goes down, like, in an unwritten history book of, like, you know, the, the legends of Strixhaven, that sort of thing. So, now, not only do we have to create the doll, we have to make it, we have to be able to squeeze its uh, hand and have her be sassy. Yes. And that's going to be a little more difficult than creating the, like, you know, doing the physical doll itself, I think it's going to be pretty easy. It's essentially, you're doing, like, a forgery, you know? Like, the doll's description, that's, like, relatively easy, but doing that might be a little more complex. You might have methods, you know, uh, to do that. What I think you're biggest hurdle though is going to be is um, you know convincing the other students like this, the ones that were waiting for you like they're going to wonder why you didn't just come out to the front if you, if you were successful you see what we'll do is we'll just have, you know, after we do her, we're just going to have her up in our room. And it's like, oh, you guys wanted us to show her off? She's in our room. Type thing. Not We're not going to go out in the morning going, ha-ha, we got it. So. Now I'm thinking. I should. Have not been a monk I should have had something so I could tinker so I could do this <laughs> dang it but again um, I, I would uh, also kind of direct your attention to the last little blurb in the message of the day it is now the following morning are you ready to put your plan into action on the other hand who cares what these other kids think about you anyway? I mean, exams are coming up. The Rose Stage Festival is coming up. You have much more important things to think about than your social standing at school. Right? Right? See, I don't think Mitzi cares much about her social standing. If she cares more about, like... Proving them wrong, getting her revenge. She, she, she don't want to do it for social standing. She wants to do it to shut them up. Yeah, basically. For getting her in trouble. Yeah. Okay. But I'm, I'm just trying to point out that, like, you know, not, quote, completing this, uh... Yeah, it's not going to be anything if we don't complete it, but... It, Well, so, we should work on in like our free time then between studying. Well, I mean, if you wanted to like make a thing, like I, I don't think you'd be able to get away. I, you definitely wouldn't be able to convince them that, like, you know, why won't you show us the dial already? You know, you're still like trying to figure out how to make it talk and. What not? Mm. Okay. So, like, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna 
do this until, you know, if you want to try and trick the other kids that you got it and stuff, I mean, you kind of have to do it. You see, and you know, even though our other players aren't here, I mean, we can still say, hey, they're using, like, minor illusion to make Sally, um, Sassy Sally talk, so we can make them think that we, did, you know, got it. Um, there's that first things first we need to try to forge us a doll how do we go about doing that roll really well oh <laughs> <laughs> let's take a peek here He's always so low on loading the, the sheets. Okay. We go to our trusty list of skills. Hmm. This is... Thanks for the Robbie John's blessing from Mitzi there. Um... I'm I'm preparing you for this. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's Oh no, you also have one in the list. Oh. <laughs> but I gave you inspiration so you can have so you have advantage on your roll. Then you have you can add your our Proficiency bonus plus a d6. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, do you want It'll to look like it? That's it. Do you want to make a doll? Do you want to buy a doll and like try to alter it? What are you doing? I mean, either I, do either of us own a doll already, or? I, I do not own a doll. I don't think Mitzi would have a doll at school. She might at her own, her home. Mm -hmm. Like her family. I don't know about Cletus or Dinkin. Doubtful. <laughs> okay, but well, if... Cl Cletus probably does. <laughs> If they have, I mean, if we get a doll, if we buy a doll, we got to buy it in this area. Then they'll be going, that just looks just like that one doll in, you know, in the fire mm -hmm. drill cafe. So I say more of making it. Right. But I mean, if you buy a doll, you can alter it. Like, you can dye its hair and change its clothing. That's true. Yeah. Do they sell dolls on campus? I'm sure they do. They need to have... They, they probably have, like, the regular Sally Jane dolls. They probably call them something else. But it's, it's you know... It's probably the same concept where it's the doll, you squeeze its hand, but it says something adorable instead. Well, so that'll make it much easier to, uh... yeah. So now we need to sneak out and get that. Because we don't want to be seen. Oh, yeah. So I could sneak out go get the doll and come back using my things that you got me and then wherever I get it you can use yours I got you to forge it okay that sounds good let me get those up there 
Okay. So, would we sell something like that in the stadium? Mm. Let's see where. Because <clears throat> if we do, I would feel like that one would be something uh, where I'd have access to, to where I can get into and possibly get it early. Cletus can get something from the Fire Drill Cafe, but it's probably inside the Biblioplex. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go with because that's where, like, the main, like, campus store is. Mm-hmm. Um, and nobody works in the Biblioplex, correct, that we, in our group? Correct. Alrighty, well, I'm going to sneak to the Biblioplex. So... I'm trying to it it's not exactly like I mean, you you're trying to not be detected by those specific students or I'm less. not yeah I'm trying to basically blend in with other people you know not like trying to be totally not seen just trying to be everybody else and you okay all right, give me, um, do a, let's do a stealth roll. Let's do, uh, well, we'll do like a two out of three. Okay. 22 stealth. All right. Uh, one more. Okay, you're good. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you can easily get to the biblioplex. Um, honestly, you I put on the hoodie that I purchased and put it up over my head and just walk around. You know, blah blah blah. Everybody you, thinks I'm just a normal student. You did so well on uh, the rolls to get there. I'm not gonna make your roll to get back. Uh, you you were able to blend in. You procure a doll. So the um, I don't know. I guess like it's normally like a probably like a brown haired doll or something, maybe blonde. Okay. Probably has the same dress. Probably has a patchwork tartan dress. Which is why, you know, how, how the kids would even know how to describe it in the first place. And on the way back, I'm going to be uh, going and, like, dragging it through bushes. <laughs> I'm aging it. No, that's a good idea, yeah. Give me... A sleight of hand check. Please. Castian. Trying to decide. Okay, I'm going to use uh, Rabbi John's Blessing. So I get me two more. And I'm going to roll my Bardic Inspiration. Yeah, two more, so that's going to be 16. Crap, I don't like that, but okay. Okay. Um, you're good. We were just seeing if uh, you managed to, um, you know, activate the voice box while you're trying to age it. <laughs> ah, gotcha. <laughs> Didn't want to accidentally do that. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, pop. Pr I mean, they draw some attention, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you get back to the dormitories. You've got your 
um, aged doll. So really, you know, you just gotta, you know, I think you, like, stuff like dyes and things like that are pretty common around the school. I mean, everybody's got crazy colored hair or whatnot, and sure, sure, why not? So, I mean, you're able to, like, get the stuff. Um... <clears throat> And all right, who? <coughs> so I I think you can make the doll like make the doll look. You know, give it the look. That's not a problem. Okay. So, what do we need to roll to make? adjust the voice box what kind of role is that I would love it to be acrobatics no so it would be like a tool check like a tinkerer's tools kind of thing Does Cletus or, uh, yeah, does Cletus have Tinker Souls? So I don't think Wiz or, uh, Dankin does. Dankin does not. I don't know why I closed this sheet. I should have kept it for the spells. As for Cletus, if roll 20 will ever load. Well, Cletus is an artificer, and he is proficient with, uh, he's got this filled out, kind of funny. Oh, he's an artificer. Ah, that's what uh, I wanted to be for this. I see, I see, okay. He's the mofo doing that. So it doesn't have the, all right. <clears throat> Yep, so. Give me a second. I can just roll a Tinkerer's Tools off of his sheet, see. And, um, I mean, that's gonna be. I was giving him advantage, I was in the middle of inspiration. Okay. Like it, yes, dexter dexterity. It's Cletus. You said Cletus. I know, but then I was trying to type it in and I couldn't remember. Oh, bitch. How does he only... His dexterity is only a plus two. Oh. Yeah. Mm, and that's yeah, that's something else. So with um, let's see, I forget what that one does. But he does have. A magical tinkering thing. Yeah, that's something different. But whenever tapped by a creature, the, the object emits a recorded message that can be heard up to 10 feet away. You know, there's different things that they can do. So I was trying to see if something, I don't know, I'm trying to. Help the poor boy out here. Hmm. I mean, okay, that's that's that that is an option. Um, 
but you know uh, the voice might be an issue and um, what exactly would you want a message to say Well, it has to be something sassy. Um, and with teachers wanting it to be taken away, probably sassy about the teachers? Yeah. Something like, uh, oh, school sucks or something. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. This school sucks. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one option. Otherwise, like, with the tinkering, I mean, you could try to... And even with, uh... The Hogwarts is a better school. Oh, my God. <laughs> Professor so-and-so is lame. They teach you real magic at Hogwarts. Well, yeah, so that that's about it for options there. He can't really, he, he's unable to really affect it mechanically, but he could do the, um, you know, the magical tinkering to emit a recorded message, but someone would have to record a message, and this is, you know, a girl doll, so it's not going to sound great coming out like this. It'll be Mitzi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is where Mitzi's role is going to come in. Okay. How good's your deception? Um. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. She's got it check marked on her skill list. Sweet. That means you are. What's the number next to it? Proficient uh, with two. it. Two. Okay, so, so so you're proficient in it. You just don't. Your charisma is like like a ten or eleven. Her charisma is an eleven. It says. Yeah. So you're proficient with deception. You just don't have. The charisma, the extra stuff. So yes, yeah, so at least you would have the two. Okay. Mm. So is that what we would need to roll for a good? Yeah. Okay. So roll with advantage with your Robbie Jean's. I mean, not with your Robbie Jean, with your inspiration, and then we could also add your Robbie Jean's blessing and your. Bardic inspiration, if we need to. Rolling well, a nat no, twenty would be deception awesome. Deception check. Deception. Yep, right there. Bam. I'm glad we took the uh, the inspiration. So that's a nat twenty. <laughs> Do we want to make it better? Let's go ahead and add Robbie John's blessing to that too. So that's okay. 24. <laughs> okay. And then what is this message going to say? You, It can be up to six seconds. And with um, with, with that roll, you got to make it good. Oh. Could it be something that insults like Principal, maybe, or is it something that insults the school or a specific teacher? 
How rude can Cat get? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Your feet smells like Ricky. <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself. <laughs> well, that's why you said it. <laughs> um. Well, do you have any ideas of what you want me to say, Caspian? That was meant to ask you, Caspian. Uh. <laughs> well, the teachers wanted it put up. So, something, I would say something teachery, something, something sassy about either the teacher or the school. But I'm going to let you come up with that awesomeness. <laughs> One, because I have no clue. Well, okay, let's see. So, I'll repeat, inside the doll is a voice box that some clever students rig to repeat rude phrases whenever the doll's hand is squeezed. Jokesters used it to irritate faculty and staff members before it was confiscated. So all it says is that it was it repeated rude phrases. It doesn't necessarily Nobody say about any anybody in particular. Yeah. And I'm just not sure what to say. I'm trying to think. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, like, um, the phrases that they have in the book for Sassy Sally okay. Jane are lame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these are supposed to be, like, the rude uh, phrases that, that has given this doll a reputation, and um, th these are just stupid. So... I mean, anything we come up with. <laughs> Basically, anything that's going to make a teacher turn around and be like, what? <laughs> okay. You're like, you know, who said that? Or, you know. Something like the herbology teacher don't know the difference between a um, a plant and a guy named Herb or something. You know, I don't know. I mean, even that, you probably have the stream muted, but. Huh? Do it again. We got sound alerts. 
Oh yeah, I do have the stream muted. Yeah, which is good because you know you don't want the echo, but it means you miss. It's Brittany. It's Brittany, bitch. <laughs> I mean, there's an idea. Okay, well, I guess it's not really important. You did roll well, so... We'll just, uh, you know. Yeah, it's hard for me. I'm not on the spot. That's all right. We'll um, bypass that. It'd be awesome to actually have something, but you know, I, I'm I'm at a loss. So that is fine. So I mean, I had I found something that I was like, oh, I don't know if it's that cool. I'll put it in the. The roll twenty chat though. I don't know if how lame this is. <laughs> it it probably less lame than <laughs> the ones in the book. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I took the. I don't know if this will work. Oh, well, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that... Is... I mean, I thought it was okay, but I was like, uh, I feel like there's something better out there, but I can't think of anything. I'd love to learn, but sure would like a teacher who could teach. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That works. So, now you have your doll. You've got your sassy Sally Jane. You've got it all set up. Um, let me just double check here whenever tapped by a creature. So, basically every time you, quote, squeeze her hand, she's going to say, As a student, I love to learn. Sure would help if the teachers could teach, though. Sounds good. Hell yeah. And it sounded just like her, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so now what? And we're just going to have it, like, just sit and, uh, what do we want it? Should we carry it around with us? Or just, like, bring it to class or something? Or should we... Well, uh, no, because I want, because if we do something, if we just carry it around, or, see, just carrying it around, like, have it in our backpack, okay, that might be something, but... Taking it to class and going, ha ha, look what we got. They're going, well, why didn't you show us last uh, night? Yeah. Uh, where could we, what could we do with it? Okay, so the Archway Commons has that statue. Yeah. If we could mage hand it up into the statue's hand. Without That'd being be cool. seen, they go, where is it? It's like, didn't you see it? It's on the statue in the Archway Commons. Yeah, that's a cool plan. Okay. Um... So, who has Mage Hand? I'm assuming Mitzi doesn't because she's just a rogue. I don't think 
I have any spells. I do not. How about one of our other two students? Cletus does not. Thinking your only hope. Dinkin does have Mage Hand. Oh, Yay. I hate coming up with plans and not having nobody who can do it. <laughs> all right. So, who all is going to uh, do this? You obviously will need Dinkin. Mm -hmm. I'll go with. She'll drag Cletus along too, just for. Because he should be there. I don't know. <clears throat> Alright. Oh, spelled it wrong. For his stealth check to put it up there. I guess what we could do. Yeah, I'm going. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be doing like some kind of gymnastics little stuff, trying to, you know have people's attention like over by the fire jolt cafe or something just trying to attract attention while Duncan puts it up there and I gave him inspiration so he has advantage on his uh, stealth roll to, to put it up there because he's probably going to need it okay All right, make an acrobatics check. Well, before you do that, what is Mitzi doing? Um, maybe she and Cletus could also help distract people. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just gonna stand there and watch Duncan. <laughs> okay. Well, how would how would Mitzi like to help distract? Um. Hello, Rib Rob. Welcome in. The Hi, Rob of Ribs. Got it. I bet you can't guess what's going to happen. <laughs> Five, four. Shut three, up. Three, Shut up, Lewis. <laughs> it's a small crew tonight. A... Okay, actually, Mitzi's going to um force Cletus to. Tell everybody that coffee's like ten percent off or something at the cafe. <laughs> Even if it's not really, she'll make him give him discounts. You don't want to get him fired from his job. No, but who says he's gonna get fired? <laughs> well, well, we, well, he could just tell him that he could just be out there yelling the specials. Okay, yeah. Okay. We could give him uh, one of those fire drill cafe signs and he could be twirling it and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get your fire drill today. So, you're trying to convince Cletus to work when he's not getting paid. That is going to require a persuasion check. Yes, hi. Hello. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Ooh. If he doesn't do it, she's gonna smack him upside the ear. Okay, well, I'm you're not doing it. You're gonna smack I'm him upside the ear. Sense. God damn it, Rib Rob. Yeah, I was pretty sure Nibs was going to be the first halfling to die in Dragonlance, but I'm not so sure anymore. <laughs> I mean, what? Where, where are those terrible jokes? <laughs> oh, come on. They need to update these. Mm, 
mm. All right. All right. For for you spell jammer fans out there. How do you organize a space themed D&D session? I don't know. How? You plan it in advance. <laughs> plan it. So when she's trying to persuade him, he's over there going, I'm not going to work in river. I don't get paid. Exactly. But he And he's making a big old uh, scene out in front of the fire truck cafe about not working, not, not getting paid. Yeah, and that she's going to argue with him. She thinks he's not helping on the group with their plan. Okay. All right, and now, uh, Cassie with the acrobatics. All right, good. Um, and now we'll give Dankin a stealth roll. You got this, Dankin. Oh, with advantage, a nine. With advantage, he got a nine. Um. <clears throat> um. All right. Good night, Red Rob. Bye, Red Rob. Leave us open in our browser, and don't don't put us on mute. You gotta leave us at like one percent volume, otherwise, uh, it it's like it doesn't count it or, or something. I guess I don't know. <clears throat> well, that's supposed to say thank him, so he now has an eleven. No, he does not. He can't just claim shit after the roll. <laughs> Fine. Well, he has one for later. Okay. But, either way. Um, you know, people... Well, just because we're putting it up there, I mean... It's... Exactly. It people people no are like, Hey, what's he doing? It's like, oh, Just putting this up there to show it off. Or, because I don't know what he would say <laughs> so basically yeah all right so um yeah uh, you get it up there and like some of the students start to notice get up there and you know they you know they're looking for you and I was like hey you you guys got it why didn't you where why didn't you come back around the house last night? We were waiting there for hours. Well, we are busy being attacked by plants in the back. Oh, uh, plus, uh, we were, uh, just giving a little payback for you guys ditching out on us last time. What, you mean when you, like, got caught? Like, anybody would have ran. And... You know, we did it. We were stealthy. We got out of there before you guys could tell on us and get us in trouble. We don't know what you're going to do. So we got in, got out. Okay. Go ahead and make a deception check. But the thing is, we did get in and we did get out. But you're trying to make them think you got in and then got out with the doll. Yeah, and this is awesome because I have zero charisma and not proficient. Oh, well, can I? I'm gonna thirteen. Give you... One of those bardic inspirations in the pack. Which one? Yeah, you gotta be more on top of them. Oh, well. That one for next time. Okay. But, I mean, they look at you kind of incredulously, like, huh. Okay, well, what's it say? Make a talk. Come on, let's. That, that's what 
dank and mage hands the hand and pushes the hand. Okay. Yeah, you do that. And, like, you know, she says the thing. And the kids laugh. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> cool, what else? Sure, it's a lot more, but we have more pressing things to do before a teacher comes out here and finds us. Yeah, we've done enough already just getting the doll. Okay, well, if you're worried about the teachers coming out and find you, why'd you put it up in the statue? Well, because we're going to leave. They won't know who put it there. Yeah, they weren't supposed to see us put it up there. Uh, hmm. So I think he probably would start to kind of get a bit of a crowd at this point. And I'm um, like... Dip them into the shadows, back and away. Okay. Oh, Missy, I'll go into the cafe. Yeah, let's go to the cafe and get a coffee. Yeah. Get us a jolt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so you leave. You just leave the doll up there, then. Yep. Okay. You guys go back to the fire jolt. You grab up your coffees. Get some coffee, and just try to enjoy the rest of the weekend. Um. Pleased with yourselves. And at this point, we are all going to level up. So, for Mitzi and Castian, do that as you normally would. Um,. The others will have to catch up when they decide that uh, to join us. <clears throat> and we roll, and if it's not average, we take average. Yeah. So, while we go through this uh, leveling up process here, we're going to take a short break. Um and yeah so don't go anywhere yet guildies or after these messages we'll be right back
Hello, hello, and welcome back. What? That's so weird. Where am I? Oh, that's okay. Anyhow, I don't, I did not recall, um, bringing that back up. Anyways, thank you. We are back. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. And thank you, Sparkles Mandy, for the lurk there. Uh, we appreciate you. So much. Like, you, you're an awesome viewer for us. Someday, <laughs> I will be able to repay the these favors <laughs> but it's a little loud someday someday yes I like get some some money I start throwing some gift subs around tossing some biddies shake your biddies but no all right um <clears throat> So, yes, during the break, um, our present players have leveled up their characters or are almost done doing so. Yep. I took uh, Way of the Monk. I mean, sorry, sorry blah, blah, blah. That's uh, blah, blah, blah. I took Way of the Open Hand. Which is a Way of the Monk. couldn't decide between a few and then I was like yeah this way I can um, push people back if I want to knock people down if I want to okay. so this will be fun okay my character is all done I think awesome okay so um, and, and furthermore, um, just to kind of wrap up what happened. So after you go back, you, you get your coffee and stuff and, you know, you, you hang out doing whatever. By the time you come back outside, the doll is gone, confiscated. Um, but the students do, uh, hold true to their word and they pay for your lunches for a month. Hell yeah. Um, meanwhile, the third and final exam of the term is quickly approaching. Um, <clears throat> Uh, hang on, let me bring this down a little bit. It's still loud. Actually, I'm gonna change the. I'm gonna change the track altogether. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, as. You know, the, the days and weeks lead up to the exam, uh, you know that this is going to be a test of your knowledge of Oteogs. Our knowledge of what? Oteogs. I know all about them. Oh, what are they? I'll go ahead and, <laughs> and put the word into the chat. Um, well, let's see if we can, we can find out, uh, just how much you guys do know. So there, there's a lot of information, um, as per usual with any exam, there is a studying phase and then the testing phase. So the day before the exam, uh, you can study the course material. Um, 
I guess I have to bring that handout back up. Yeah, I don't want to fight one of those. So, <clears throat> yeah, we'll go over some of the stuff you learn while you're studying. Um, well, if you study, because as you, you probably know, the studying phase, um, you have a few different options. So, you can either just study as normal. And to do to do that, uh, each character su must succeed on an ability check against a DC that is noted in the encounter. You're able to use any ability and skill you wish when making the check, but you can only make it once. Um, so if you've already used it for a studying phase, you can't use it again. On a successful check, you gain one reroll to use during the testing phase. Now, you can either uh, pull an all nighter to gain two rerolls during the testing phase if you succeed on the ability check, but if you do so, you're going to gain one level of exhaustion that takes effect at the start of the day of the exam so you will have disadvantage on the exam on even with the reroll uh, but you'll have two rerolls so otherwise another option is to study together if two or more characters engage in group study each character has advantage on the ability check during the studying phase and then of course I think Mitzi and I will Study together. Yeah, study together. Yes, and then yeah, that works for me. just for the sake of completion, uh, you can always skip studying and not gain any rerolls. Should we make the others study with us or just have. Uh, we're not going to worry about them. Okay. So you get to choose. So if and you all these report cards, why do they not have a spot for which skill you've used for the uh, thing so we can keep track of these? Yeah, that would be nice if they had that. So it just has for the exams and rerolls. Well, oh no, that's the the skills that you get from the exams, yeah. rather. Yeah, I am not. Entirely sure. I think you've, you, well, I don't know if you've used acrobatics. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't know how I would use it, but I it probably would have. I'm trying. I don't think I'd have used history, but I'm not sure if I used perception for him, one of them or not. Yeah, you could probably do perception. Actually, wait. Okay. I think I actually probably would have used perception for one of them because that would, to me, would be would be linked more to studying okay so that's going to be a no for that and then i would have either used because we've only done this twice acrobatics or spell <clears throat> yep and then just keep in mind too, like this are, when, when you go to the next year of courses that all resets oh okay So, I'm just going to roll stealth because it would be either acrobatics or stealth. And they're both the same. <laughs> well. Mitzi, what skill would you like to use? I don't remember what she used before. I think she used nature. So that means I can't use that, right? 
Right. But, but I don't remember what she would have used for the. I think she used nature on either the first or the second. I don't remember any other. I did not write that down. That's a. Yeah, it, it didn't have a spot on there for it for a reason. Um, what would she recommend you do? Just pick one? Yeah, just just pick one. It's the last okay. exam of the term. And if you double crit, I, I get stuff to not true, but at least I'm I'm wishing for a double crit for you. He's optimistic. But yeah, go ahead and give me a skill check. Okay, though. I'm fairly certain I did not use part of my Okay. You guys go with your rolls? No. no. Actually, she... You've got a Robbie Johns, I believe. Or yeah. something. And I'm going to give her a Robbie Johns, too. We may have enough, but I don't want to take the chance. So mine's a, four, mine's a 14 and hers is a 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, here's some of the facts that you learn while you are studying all about Oteogs. If, so if a place is disgusting, there's a good chance there is an Odiug nearby. There's an Odiug in uh in Cletus's oh. room. Uh yeah. no. <laughs> uh bones and carrion mixed with trash are often a strong sign that an Odiug is present as it waits for carrion to ferment before eating it. Another fact that you learn is that shiny treasures glinting from piles of refuse might indicate that an Otiug is present, as these aberrations hoard treasures from their victims. And, no matter how disgusting it might be, trash doesn't belch. If you ever hear a pile of trash belch, there's an Otiug in there. <laughs> uh... Some spellcasters use Odiugs as guardians, both to protect their underground lairs and to dispose of their enemies. Characters with uh, evil designs who wish to congregate far from prying eyes often operate underground knowing that the authorities avoid stench and trash-filled undercrofts and sewers. In such foul locations, Otiugs make excellent sidekicks. What do they look like? If there's a I'm posting it in the... Yes. Let me see. You know, they, they have the exam about Otiugs. I wonder if they even have an Otiug like in this adventure. It's in there. Oh, it is. That means you might encounter one at some point. Ooh. Oh, wait, wait. I figured wait. anything we're studying, we're going to run into. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, yeah, so. With your 14 and 15, you will each get a reroll on the testing phase. Would a 12 and a 13 have done it? No. Ah. 
You needed... Well, actually... I didn't get it, did I? You didn't. A 13 was all you needed. Oh, okay. For that one. The difficulty has gone up during the semester. Because I think the first one was just like an 11. All right, it is the next day. You didn't pull an all-nighter. Nope. You just did regular studying. You learned lots of interesting facts. That means it is time for the testing phase. So, um, the test is, once again, in two parts. The first is labeled Otiug layer evidence and this is a multiple choice uh, questionnaire um, where you must choose the correct answer about physical signs pointing to the presence of an Otiug including large piles of particularly noxious trash, deep vats of liquid dung, chunks of carrion scattered among filth and and burping and incrogonous noises coming from trash requires an investigation check. Of course it does. You each have one re-roll to use during the testing phase. And I will use it. Oh, good use. All right. Uh, should I use my? I think I should use my roll. It's up to you. All right. That looks better. Okay. The second part of the essay. Or, I'm sorry, of the exam is the short essay section. Woo, I'm ahead of myself. Um, where you must write details about which intelligent creatures might use Odeogs as guardians. And that and one is that, going to require a, a persuasion check. <laughs> Okay. You have persuasion, thinky. Okay, so you both passed the exams. Yay. So that means uh, you gain a student die. Did she fail her second one? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's a, okay. Yeah, so we get, we get, both get one, and skills are investigation and persuasion. Um, yeah. Yep. So gain the, the student die and then uh oh that's it we both passed our exams though yep you both yeah. passed okay you both you both received passing grades you didn't ace the exams but you passed i can look at that Oh, I just heard a rivet. <laughs> I think it was a cat protecting them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh. And you guys did great with the exams. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, the the end of the school year is nigh. Um, you know, classes are are starting to wind down and whatnot. Um, the general attitude is very blah, laze, all whatever, not not giving two shits about nothing. Um, but there has been a lot of buzz on campus regarding the Rose Stage Festival. And uh, you would have heard about this. You know that it is held every year, blending performing arts and improvisation into uh, produce a new play. And the entire student body is invited to participate or spectate as they wish. Um, and yeah, so like it's, it's, it's fun morning. <clears throat> Come on. My stupid mouse keeps double clicking. <laughs> But yeah, uh, yodeling, mocking chants, dramatic intonations, baritone singing, and other enthusiastic sounds reach your ears as a rowdy, laughing group of students comes into view. And, you know, you see, you, you know, any number of students that you previously interacted with, uh, Let's just go with our favorite foil of Rosie. <laughs> and she shouts, Hey! And she like beckons you to come closer. It's like, Hey! We're on our way to the Rose Stage over on Silver Quill's campus. The Rose Stage Festival is finally here. Everyone's already practicing their performances. The festival is all about improv. The Drama Guild gives out prompts, and anyone who wants to take the stage and deliver their lines however they please, you gotta come check it out. Okay, I guess. All right. Good. Good. Fun. Fun. Uh. Ah, damn it. <laughs> I did forget one little thing. So, um... The damn oh, okay. It is the Magical Physiology's professor. So, uh, there, there's one, uh other side note with uh, the exam uh, rather the conclusion of it um, your professor uh, for for your magical physiologies class that's uh, professor Verelda Lang um, gave you an assignment it, it's an end of term assignment and it's simply uh, to collect some material components from Sedgemore uh, for her spells. Sedgemore, um, you would know, and Mit Mitzi probably a little more familiar due to the fact that she has designs to join the Witherbloom College. But um, yeah, Sedgemore is the the bayou that surrounds the Witherbloom campus. So it's like a like a bog, swamp type area. You don't really have any reason to go there other than um, to collect material components for Professor Veralda Lane. So you kind of have this in the back of your mind as you're heading towards the Silver Quill campus. And the Rose Stage Festival. Okay. 
and as you you get there I mean there's so it's a big uh, outdoor performing space there's benches for spectators an orchestra pit a large main stage that is decorated with a huge rose uh, there's an annex building behind the main stage that, you know, is typically like, you know, the backstage area for performers as well as, you know, uh, storage for uh, equipment and prop props. Um, as, as a general thing, the, the row stage is typically available year round to any group or course on the campus. Um, you know, the Play Actors Drama Guild often uses the stage to rehearse and perform. And other amateur groups and courses with, you know, the, a performance component uh, regular, regularly do so as well. Um, this event is being organized by the Play Actors Drama Guild. And there's students of all years and colleges um, all throughout the area, and as well as professors from all parts of Strixhaven. And let's see, we do have a map that we can look at. I don't know how well this, how much of this is set up because. I'm going to guess that black screen means um, all right all right so can we zoom in? okay I'm going to drag you to out there Bring in our good friend Scribot. <laughs> All right. So obviously there's way more people around. Um, I'm not gonna put up hundreds of tokens. That would just be ridiculous. Plus, it would bog this down. Mm hmm. But yeah, so as you get there, the the area where you your guys' tokens currently is is the general seating. There's you know rows of benches that are magically treated to resist the elements, and there's uh, low sloping ramps that are set between them. Um, there's Probably like 50 some odd students just sitting about and chatting and watching the performances on the stage uh, in front of you. Um, to your left, where you see uh, uh, the person there in that little like pit area, that is the orchestra pit. Sunken areas reserved for the student or professional musicians who accompany musical productions or provide ambient music for other stage shows. Um, and it right. sounds very similar to this noise that we hear behind us. Probably, yeah, because uh, right now um, there are members of the Strixhaven Show Band Association um, that are in the pit and they are currently handing out kazoos to anyone who who comes close enough to grab one. Oh, Fitzy wants a kazoo. <laughs> very good, very good. And then of course, uh, right in front of you is the main stage. So this impressively large oval stage has ample room for performers, props, and other set pieces. There is a wide set 
of magical steps that rises five feet to the stage. And, of course, as you've come to expect around Strixhaven, sections of it are enchanted to move and reshape themselves for full accessibility. Pillars... Um, pillars to the east and west of the stage are used by production groups to rig up backdrops and other set pieces. So that's, uh, like these guys here. These are the pillars. Uh, let's see. So, there are members of the Play Actors Drama Guild set up, uh, to the south of the stage. Essentially where you, where you guys are. Um, they are handing out random character prompts. Um, and then uh, you will notice there's, you know, this, this dark area on your map is the annex building that I had mentioned before. So you see the doors that go, uh, you know, into the backstage area. Uh, da, 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 da. And right now, there's nothing going on there because all of the action is out here. But yes, you can grab kazoos. You can, um, you could grab prompts. Uh, I'll grab a prop. Let's see. So. He gets a kazoo. <laughs> um. Yeah. Cheers, jeers, and the buzzing of kazoos. Ring out as you draw near the Rose stage on Silver Quill College's campus. On the main stage, several students uh, play act histrionically. I'm not sure what that word means. Histrion histrionically. Now I'm curious. I want to say it has something to do with history? Historically accurate. Okay. Possibly. Um, Alright, you know what? I'll look it up later. Look it up later. Or if anyone in the chat wants to look it up. Histrionically. If there is anyone in the chat. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, so there's several students yeah, play acting. Right now, um, one, one of the students wears a flamboyant noble's costume. Another wears a felt dragon's head, and there is a third wearing a court jester's pantaloons. And the audience is roaring with laughter as um, a scene plays out, as whatever scene plays out. They don't tell me what the scene is. That's uh, oh, in a way that is very emotional and energetic, but is not sincere or lacks real meaning. So yeah. That that totally checks out. Who knew there was a word? Histrionically. The more you know. <laughs> but yeah, so as you as you head over your your you're heading over to grab kazoos or whatnot, um uh Rosie comes up and she's got her own kazoo. She's like, Hey, you here to act? Or maybe just just to watch, huh? Or maybe you're the musical talent. Either way, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see what you try. And I wave my pop in the air like I just don't care. <laughs> okay, so... Um, <laughs> Alright. Mitzi's grabbing a kazoo... Um, yep. Lewis, you're grabbing a prompt. P-R-O-M-P-T-E. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes, I'm grabbing a prompt. Uh, now, let's see. So, Castian, the, the, um, the player, the, somebody from the Players Guild gives you a little slip of paper and directs you towards the backstage area. Um, where you're able to don their, their costume elements and things. I just thought I was going to be waving stuff in the audience. 
The what? I said I thought I was just gonna be waving stuff in the audience. Oh. But okay. <laughs> but there, um, you find Quintilius and Tipion Melentor the third. How did I go through the wall? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. There's absolutely no reason why you should have been able to. But. Okay. Gotta love these. These old Roll20 maps. Um, <clears throat> anyhow. So. Uh, let's see. All right, so handle. See, they should have a little prompts macro well, to where you can. They do like so. To see what you get. So they've got they've got prompts, or if you just want to handle props, you could do that too, from the ends of the um, stage. I mean. I said I was doing the prompt, so what am I, um, what did I get? <laughs> um, okay, your prompt simply says, Paranoid Wizard. Okay. And, let's see, so. So I just have to act like Aerosaur? <laughs> Hey, no. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, all right. So, do, 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 do. and you can find, like, there's, like, costume pieces, like, you know, there's, like, you know, a crumpled old, old, like, hat with stars and a half moon on it and robes and stuff, and you can, you know, really ham up the part. Well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all out. I'm gonna have the hat, some crumpled up robes. I'm gonna have uh, a book that looks like a spell book. All right, and then so you can come out and act out this paranoid wizard. Um, it's gonna require a successful performance check. But One before, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say before you do that, um, you are currently being accompanied by Kazoo. Yes, yeah, because Mitzi is down there. She's got her Kazoo and she's kind of uh, kazooing it. She's kazooing it. She's trying to enhance your performance with her own. Um, are you possibly? Yeah. You could yes, yes. You, you could encourage a performer, you could heckle. Oh wait, those are separate things. Um all right, go ahead, uh Mitzi. Actually, so you you both need to make performance checks. Okay. When she sees casting come out, she'll also stop and do like a little woo. Yeah, there's a break in the action, and Quintilius is like, "All right, you're on. Get out there." I think I pushed the wrong one. I did persuasion. I meant to do performance. Oh no! no. I'm so sorry. So I go out there, trip on the robes. <laughs> you immediately trip on the on the robes, but M Mitzi is just killing it with her kazoo. It's like I trip and she sees me tripping and she like makes the whole I mean she got a net 20 on her kazoo performance I'm gonna say that that was enough to to take enough attention away from your fumble you you get some people that laugh at you and like call you a klutz but most of the people there are are just enamored with Mitzi's performance that's her true calling, a kazoo player. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah. 
So, not too shabby. Not too shabby. You did great. Um, so, as the, the crowd roars with laughter and the festival appears to be reaching its height, when suddenly... I clicked everything except performance. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> What's your performance plus? Oh, I, I don't know. It's probably a zero. You probably don't have anything in it. No, but the first time I clicked persuasion, I was like, whoops. And then I go and I click um, perception. <laughs> Yeah, the zero and the one. Oh, we already went with it, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. So, the crowd roars with laughter and the festival appears to be reaching its height when suddenly, confused guffaws followed by screams of terror ring out. One of the stage props barrels away from its handler. Monstrous shrieks coming from its throthing beak. What used to be a comically posed owlbear painted on wood is transforming into a real and enraged owlbear. And it is rampaging right towards you. Yep. I have a pouch full of muffins just for the owlbear. Okay. <laughs> We are going to need to roll initiative. Because I've seen I've seen this movie. If you're taking a test on something, something's going to show up. Mitzi's like super kazooed. Yep. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I suppose I need to roll initiative for the Albear. You don't have to. It's it's over. <laughs> Got a three. All right. So, um, you see this 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 stage prop transforming into a real, actual owl bear. Um, Mitzi. You will have advantage on your first attack against the owlbear because of your successful ability check on stage. Okay. Also, because you learned about owlbears in your second exam, um, one of you aced it, didn't you? I did. Because... Castian aced the exam. Um, Castian will have advantage on all of his attack rolls during this encounter. That's why I brought my muffins. <laughs> um, I went to the store and bought those muffins. Now, at the same time, as you guys are dealing with this, the other performers and stage crew are active in the background as other props uh, begin to animate and fly around the stage. Okay, and I'm sorry, I need to dip for just a sec real quick. I will be right back uh, if I find my screen. I'll be right it is back. so funny <laughs> because that's why 
that's why in the test when it says it loves muffins, I went to the fire jolt and I bought a pouch full of muffins. <laughs> and it's on my character sheet. Hell yeah. I also know of architugs or whatever that don't like light. I have a light cantrip I can cast at them. You pay attention to the class because for some reason, when you're learning stuff in school, it happens. I'm one of those people All right. watching TV shows, you're going, okay, they didn't say that for no reason. There's a reason they said that. And I go, ah, that's the reason. <laughs> Okay, so, Mitzi, you get to act first. Okay, so I got a couple of spells in my level up. Yes, you do. And, hmm. Can I try using my poison spray? You, you can try anything you'd like. I just clicked it, I don't know if this one's supposed to do. Yeah, you would have to be within 10 feet, and then he has a constitution DC 11. Uh, to take the seven points. So... Yep, so you have to move closer. Move first? Yeah, you have okay. to be closer. Can I move closer now, or is it too late? No, go ahead. Okay. I think your speed is, what, 30? Yeah, she'd be able to get right up into 10 feet. Okay. Now she uses her spell. <laughs> okay. And the owlbear will attempt a constitution save. That is a dirty 20. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, that's okay. No, poison spray cantrip, so it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Must succeed or take the damage. No half damage. That's alright, though. Great try. Yay. I think I'm done if that's all I can do. Alright, um, do you have any bonus actions? No, I think you're pretty much... Okay. Yep. Cast you in. I move up. I grab my pouch of muffins. That I have just for this purpose. And I throw them towards the owl bear. You know, it's probably gonna be stupid, but I'm gonna get, I'm not gonna throw them at him, I'm gonna be approaching him with the muffins, and I'm going to do an animal handling check. Not sure if this will do anything, but they, one of their things was they like the muffins, so I'm trying to muffinize them. Let's give him um, a charisma save. Yeah. 
Hey there, little buddy. Here's some muffins. The owl bear stares at you, drool or spit or some kind of saliva dripping from its beak. And it rears its head back. And it grabs a fucking muffin from your hand. <laughs> They taught us this time. It's a school thing. They taught it. Did the uh, module have anything to do about us uh, using the muffins to... No, it just has about all the advantage you have on your attack rolls. I mentioned you have advantage on every attack roll, right? Yeah, you do. You... And I didn't even take one. I fed him a muffin. The owlbear eats the muffin and reverts back into a... No, it does not. That's, that's way too easy. <laughs> but they taught us muffins. I mean, who would come up with it? We would actually have taken the time to actually buy muffins. It, it ate the muffin. I will give it disadvantage on this attack roll. <laughs> because it, it loves its muffins. It don't want to it don't want to eat me. But, you know, it's here for some reason. One beat, one claw. A nine and a thirteen. Nice. All right. Were any of those over seventeen? If they had, a, if they were normal. No, actually. Uh, so the muffins did know that. Yeah, there's no hope. All right. I know Cat said she was gonna BRB. Are you back yet, Cat? I'm right here. I'm gonna do something else cool. You actually say in the coursework the owl bears like muffins and they expect us not to go out and buy muffins so whenever we fight the owl bear we're not gonna have a muffin. Come on. Again, these modules are very goofy. Like the whole the whole sassy Sally Jane thing. Mm -hmm. I read through it like three times and there is not like a reason why you would need to complete it as as it you know there there's like nothing it's not like the doll is going to come to life in a, in a later part of the module and save the day or something like that just you know it's just why is it in there it doesn't even have any of the black goose stuff in there all right cat it is your turn uh cat okay just in time Cassian fed the owlbear a muffin. It ate the muffin, and it still attacked him, um, but it did it did so at disadvantage. It didn't want to attack me, so he just eh. it was it was kind of confused. Okay, let me see. Can I use the daggers? Mitzi has advantage on her first attack roll of this encounter, so that is an 18. Woohoo! Oh, you do have to move up, though. Oh, I'm sorry. That good? Yep. And... And you would have a, um... You'd be able to, uh, have sneak... 
Yep, because casting is right there. Here, let's bring... Where did your sheet go? Did I close Mitzi? I might have. I must have. I have Mitzi up and I can't even see anything other than her first page. Her school coursework. Well, that's because she's just, um, yeah, it's like, she shows up in your, your journal. Yeah. yeah, I just brought, I just brought it up just to. There we go. So, here, I'll just click on that once for you. But I, I clicked the check on it so that it should okay. show up and. It didn't, it didn't. It didn't roll it, so. What is it? Is it actual 2d6? Yeah, it's 2d6. Well. That's a good hit. Alright. <laughs> Alright, that's that. You do 12 damage. Very good. Anything else, Mitzi? I think I'm done if that's all I can do. All right, Castian. You could have just ate the muffins. <laughs> oh, that one's a mess. Wait, no, it's one with, yeah, low level. I get two plus my, yeah. Actually, but it wouldn't be a short sword, but still, it would be the same. It would just be two points. It would be two less, so that would be a total of six damage. So that would have been my offhand for it, because I'd get one swing with my short sword, then the other two wings are with my own arm okay damage noted and then I'm going to use a key point fury of blow and if I hit a creature with one of my attacks, bent my fury of blows, I can oppose. So I'm going to try to knock him prone with my fury of blows. 16 to hit. Um, a 16 will hit. How does the, um, can you link the thing for the tripping, please? A dexterity saving throw, and that'll be DC 13. All right, I was just making sure there wasn't um, anything about size. Because there really should be when they start getting bigger. But alright, so it gets to make a uh, deck save. That's a two. So he is laying down. Not that it matters because he's, he can just get back up on his turn, but. Yeah, so I'm not gonna. Did he take his, set, his seven damage? Um, 12 and 6. And a 12's not going to hit, right? 
Uh, 12 is not gonna hit. So I am done. Does... Okay. Oh, Castian, you... <clears throat> it is confused, but you're doing more damage to it, so it's going to come at you again. Oh, that's fine. Uh, 12. Oh, yes. okay, and then... <sighs> Not that. And 18 with the claws. That will hit. And that's going to do 15 slashing damage. Ooh. That far. Those claws are nasty. <laughs> but Mitzi, it is your turn. A ten does not hit. Um, is there anything else she can do? Um, Mitzi has. Is that? She does have a short sword and a dagger. She just always likes attacking with the dagger. Yeah, I don't know why you don't use your short sword. I kind of forgot about it, I think. <laughs> because you can use your bonus action to make an attack with your second weapon. Yeah, you just what don't get to... My... You don't get your strength mod to the damage. Or the, it would be dex since it's finesse. But... Oh yeah, your dex. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Try to hit with your short sword. With your offhand. <laughs> Alright. Alright, you. That's good. Uh, yeah. Did I. I... 26, is... good. That's a, a critical hit. Is that good? Is that good? Did I, did I break it? Did I break it? <laughs> um. So that would be three. Wait, no. Uh. Plus four, so that would be only two damage for the piercing. So, well, it would be two plus five, so it'd be seven for piercing, and then the 17 for the sneak. So, 24 damage. Whoa. Seems kind of like a lot. I don't know, like, did I hit with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to ask just to make sure. Dang it. 24? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then I can just do this. There we go. Castian, it is your turn. I still want to just give him a muffin, but uh, he keeps hitting me, so I'm not going to want that to happen anymore. A 24 to hit for 7 piercing. Okay. Mm. What does it look like as you kill this owlbear? I'm up there, I'm like, run. I offered you a muffin. You could have just been my friend. Oh, I hate doing this, but... And then I just put him out of his misery. Okay, and as the owlbear succumbs to its injuries, it reverts back into a harmless wooden prop. And 
um, the other chaos going on around the stage, the other props and things that have come into existence, they all turn down too. Um, <clears throat> so as you are um, kind of standing there taking in whatever is going on oh, of course they don't have that token on here oh never mind they do A professor begins to approach, and she is clapping her hands. Just, if, I probably made that sound terrible, but uh, um, she she's approaches you. She's like, "Oh my goodness, uh, wow." Just wow, um, I'm impressed. Students, first year students at that, took took out an owl bear all by yourselves. That, mm, that is very impressive. Uh, he attacked me even after I gave him a muffin. I saw that. It makes me wonder if maybe might maybe might need to do a little more research on that the. The exams for next year. Um, anyways, uh, wow, you guys were amazing, and I I do have to say I was watching their performance before this happened. Uh, I didn't really catch what you did. She kind of points at Cassian, but but uh, you there, you, you play the kazoo like no other. Um. No, thank you. Uh, please. And she she begins like to loosen um, at her cloak, and this she like she is immaculately dressed. Like like she's wearing really nice clothes, and this cloak looks really like flashy and uh, just. Like high fashion, um, and sh as she starts removing it from her shoulders, she's like, "I recently commissioned a new cloak, but I want you to have this." And she takes it off and she hands this cloak. She hands it to Mitzi. Uh, oh, I, it's I, the robe I of kazoo. I... But yeah, and please take it. Like you, oh. you earned this. It, you were. I I might have to uh, in in petition you to join the actual band, uh, but um, oh, until until and just take this as a token of my gratitude. And again, I'm impressed with you guys are able to. Hey. Well, thank you so uh, much. Mitzi's just stunned. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Thank you. Again. Um, I am curious, though. Why? Let, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this thing. And, you know, she kind of brushes past you and as you, are you, are you watching on with what she's doing? Yes. Yeah. So you notice that, um, she kind of reaches down onto the thing and like rubs her finger along it and like brings her finger up and you see. Some of that same oily substance that you found on the trunk that was belched out by the frogs that was spotted on the cauldrons in Bozen Tavern. 
Wait a second. That has that mm. same blood from the other stuff that we've been fighting. What? Huh? What? What other stuff? What do you? What the, do you? Do? The mimic. Uh, the frogs that went and attacked us when they were, um, hanging out. Hmm. Because isn't that like a race that we weren't supposed to be doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> When we were in class with the frogs, and they all of a sudden started growing and attacking. Oh, that's very okay. Well, this stuff here, this is called um, Eldritch Bomb, and I mean, it it typically has uh, magical effects, but uh, I mean, the the magic that's in this is already gone. It must have faded when you slayed the beast. But, you say you found this stuff elsewhere. And now that you mention it, yeah, there there were some strange reports throughout the, the term. Okay. Hmm. You know, if I didn't know any better... I would almost think that the uh, the Eldritch Balm that th that was you know used the the latest batch of Eldritch Balm must have been corrupted in some way. Hmm. That sounds yeah. Yeah, I mean. It, it happens. I mean, in the past, uh, students have been caught practicing forbidden magic in uh, the more remote parts of Sedgemoor. Um, I mean, such sinister magic might be responsible for the bomb's corruption, but, you know, it, it's more than likely just a random surge of wild magic or some other phenomena. So randomly this stuff just appears everywhere to cause chaos and it's 100% random I mean that very well could be the case and it should be easy easy enough to fix too um here and she begins reaching around she reaches for her cloak doesn't realize that she's no longer wearing it uh reaches inside her robe and procures a vial from her pocket um, here. This is holy water. If you, uh, take this and pour it into the underwater spring, whose waters are used to create the Elder's Balm, uh, this should settle things and prevent any further corruptions. Oh, and let me guess. It's, uh, over there in... That spot we have to go already go and get other stuff. In Sedgemoor. Yeah. Um, yes. Sedgemoor. Um, here, I can, I can... She describes the location of a I spring. I can mark it on your map. <laughs> and, um... So, I... Please, if you can, uh... Take care of this. Prevent any more of the bomb uh, from corrupting things on campus. Um, I can get to tracking down where more of the contaminated bomb might have been used, and and see to you know getting because yes, uh, th these all seem linked. No, hundred percent. And for, you know, and if it can all be linked to one batch, well, that makes things much easier then. Nikki's rubbing the cork on her cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it's soft. It's like velvet. Hell yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah. 
so she point she she gives you directions and since you already know that tomorrow um, you are scheduled to be out there to collect spell components that task yep. can wait until next time on Defenders of the Veil vale, Strixhaven edition same bat time, <laughs> same bat channel. Yes. So, um, yeah. Did you guys have fun tonight? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, I think that went very well, considering you know, even just with the small party, you guys kicked that all bear's ass. Yeah, we did. Somebody decided to crit on it. Yeah, you guys did. Did stupid good um all right so with that uh we are going to head out thank you so much for joining us um as always be sure to come back next monday where we will either continue our strict saving adventures or get back into our regularly scheduled Defenders of the Veil action. Only time will tell what actually happens next Monday. But what will happen this Friday is more Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Where we finish up at Wake and Wrath and we're 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 quickly getting through that chapter too. We we are Really making some progress on the Dragonlance campaign. And then, of course, don't forget to check back on Sundays for Squared Circle shenanigans. Sunday night showdown, because I can't say the one that starts with a smack. That's like copyright. And, yeah. So, until next time, Guildies, don't go anywhere, because we're going to raid out. But, take care of yourselves. Have a great night, and we love you. Good night, Bye, everybody. Everyone.